Good morning. Happy New Year to all of you. This is Food for Thought with Pastor Clint Lang. This is the beginning of our 2021 New Year's edition of Food for Thought. And um, I just, uh, I've been contemplating. With the present lockdown in place with the COVID-19 restrictions on us with the epidemic in full swing, I've been seeking God on what it is that He would want me to focus on through this time. I believe that I've been directed to reflect on some of the thoughts which we find in the book of James. So over the coming weeks, we'll be walking through this book with short devotionals each morning, except for Sunday. And my prayer is that you'll be encouraged and refreshed in your walk with God as we take this journey together in the book. So let's start into this series, into the first chapter of James. James chapter 1, verses 2 and 4 states this. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. So in this book, in the beginning of the book here, we see that James calls believers to consider it pure joy whenever they face trials of many kinds. We don't always like trials when they come, but James says consider them pure joy because the testing of faith produces perseverance. Now there's a law at work in life that's consistent both in the realm of physical fitness and also spiritual fitness. And there's no easy to spiritual, easy route to spiritual strength just as there's no easy way to produce physical strength. For growth, each has its own kind of training and that training has to be endured and it has to be embraced. Physical testing involves persevering when we face trials of different kinds. Physical strength is built through persevering through tensile strength training exercises. Now, with physical training, you might be able to put on a balloon suit to make it look as though you've attained physical strength. But true strength is made through persistent, disciplined, endurance in the tensile strength training process. I've never known someone that's really accomplished great things in physical training unless they both embrace their training as with an understanding of its necessity and endure it to the end. And at the end of that, it produces good fruit. Likewise, we can put on a spiritual window dressing that has all the appearance of strength but it has no substance. When we work out physically, our muscles and tendons are strained and tested and they're slightly torn actually. And when they heal, they they actually uh, benefit us because the healing produces uh, a somewhat stronger end product. Over time, this repeated process of of, uh, of slight tearing and healing uh, builds strength in our tissues. When we face the pain of training, you know, we might just be tempted to give up. Many of us have New Year's resolutions to, to uh, physically train. Some of us have New Year's resolutions to spiritually train. You know, spiritually, uh, we might be tempted to give up and quit or walk away just as, as we uh, are tempted to do that with physical training when our resolve to train wanes. But... Uh, In real life, there is no substitute for persistent, difficult strength training. Trials in our spirits are similar to physical trials. Trials come to believers in many different ways, and some of us have to face them on different, uh, in different quantities or different, uh, um, in different intensities. Some of us have to face financial trials. Some are struggling to maintain their finances because of the loss of a job or maybe the reduction of business because of what's happened here in this epidemic. There's so many different scenarios. Some believers are struggling with physical health issues uh, where they can't function in a way that they would like to because of an ailment they're suffering. Um, Some are suffering with relational issues where they are someone that they love have suffered because someone has been cruel, uh, something has been done to them that's hurt them. 
Some trials are brief, very brief, lasting only a few minutes, but some seem to go on and on forever. But one thing is for sure. There is not a time in your life where there will not be some kind of storm that you will have to face. Not only do trials come to us in different ways, they can originate from a diversity of sources. Trials can be created by our own bad decisions, or they can come from someone else. They can come from our spiritual enemy who seeks to destroy and discredit us, or they can actually come from God as well. Now, I want you to know that whether God allows us to be tested or He Himself sends a trial our way, He always has a purpose. He always has a purpose to use those trials, those tests, to strengthen our character. Our Lord is sovereign and, and He loves us. Well, do we moan and groan and complain when trials of different kinds come at us? Or do we look past the pain into God's greater purpose? Let's face it, all of us have the tendency to drift and take the easy path of life if left to our own devices. But God understands the dangers that are out there. And He's not left us alone to drift if we know Him. He's given us an anchor in the promises in His Word which keep us fixed solidly to Him during the storms of our lives. God wants us to learn to set down our anchors and be fixed upon Him when storms blow so that we maintain the strength of our position and are not blown around into danger and shipwrecked. God has a purpose in the suffering that we have. Possibly a trial might come because God wants to get our attention. Maybe He wants us to be more attentive so that we will seek Him more wholeheartedly and thereby be in, in greater tune with what He's trying to do in and through our lives. Possibly God wants to purge sin from us. He permits or sends a storm into our lives um, to, to purge us of something that needs to fall away. Speaking of falling away, maybe we're gripping on to something that that God wants us to release to Him because He has something better in mind. God's ultimate desire is to transform His children into His image, to conform us to the image of Jesus Christ and His likeness so that we're equipped to serve His kingdom purposes with perseverance and glorify Him. Now friends, spiritually speaking, trial can either destroy a person's resolve, or it can build a person up. It all depends on whether we drop our anchor or not. Do we drop our anchor onto the rock of Christ through His Word, trusting in the promises of His Word? I want you to know today that if you do that, nothing will, will, will take you away from that anchor point. It's a solid anchor point. It will not be dislodged during a storm. A trial can either put us on the shelf so that we're never used by God or it can change our perspective so that God can use us greatly in the capacity that He desires for us to live within the center of His will. And this is why James says in verses 2, and four, two to 4 that we should count it all joy when we encounter trials of many kinds. It's normal for us to drift, but God's Word anchors us in Him and keeps us from drifting into danger. We must not fight against the trials when they come against us or complain, but count it all joy and persistently drop anchor on the rock, learning to trust God and thanking Him through all of the storms which come into our lives. And this is what it means to let perseverance finish its work so that we are brought into spiritual maturity in Christ, not lacking anything. God bless you. This is Food for Thought.